Hi, we are The Script and you're watching Television Net. I think number three is, um, you know, you call it a call to action. It's just for us, it was just about having fun. Um, you know, a lot of our singles have been about heartbreak and have been very like, you know, me sitting on the corner of the street missing somebody. And we just wanted to show the reflection of the party side of us in a way. So you have tracks, you know, the opening track, Good Old Days. Is, uh, is about us just causing ruckus in a pub, you know, when we were, uh, you know, when we're out on tour, those are the types of noise that we're having, so we just, you know, they reflect really, really well on the songs, and I can, I think you can tell through the production as well, you, we're just having loads of fun now, you know. Yes. I suppose the, the way to deliver music to people is, is changing. Spotify is changing a lot. Uh, streaming music is obviously becoming um, bigger than actually downloading music now. So yeah, the industry's changing quite a bit. We, we even figured when we were naming our album, Hashtag 3, it was just in, in the, I suppose, the ocean of, the, of bands that are out there, it's easier to find us by just writing Hashtag 3 and you can find us. So, uh, we just thought that was a, a cool way, c uh, considering the current climate of music, you know. You're doing all these things out of desperation You go through six degrees of separation You hear the drink, you take a talk uh, The six degrees of separation, um, the song really just came about with the lyric. You know, uh, Glenn at the time was, was going through a uh, you know, rough patch and you know, I was kind of in the studio going, you know what, let's write this about Glenn. And through the course of it, I realised, you know, when everybody's pouring their angle in it, that I realised that, you know, there's all of us in there. You know, there's all, every, every pretty much every guy has gone through those same, uh, those same six degrees, with the end result being that you see them out with somebody else, and then you realise... I shouldn't I, have done that. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. It's just, you know, it's more recognition for the end of a relationship and ex accepting responsibility and blame, which not a lot of people want to do. <laughs> yeah, you can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the King Kong banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk the guy go banging on his door. The relationship with the song uh, that we had with Will I Am uh, was because of The Voice, you know, I was, um, I was being a, a coach on the show back home called The Voice and Will was part of the coaching crew. And we just got talking backstage and, you know, as you do, musicians start playing each other music. And we played him Hall of Fame. And it ended up just being, you know, a song that he wanted for his own, his own album. He just wanted to kind of take it off us. But we didn't let him have it, thank God. Um, but it was a gr just a great collaboration between just two, two mates hanging out in the studio and called the lads up, they buzzed down the studio and we ended up with the, with the, with the song Hall of Fame. To deny this as a, as a positive platform for a new talent, especially considering the credibility side that The Voice has, you know, a show was needed um, to be able to be a launch pad to, you know, go against, almost be the anti-reality show. It's like, you know, you're getting to know musicians that can play, sing, write and produce the real people who are just on the border of getting signed, you know, as opposed to picking someone from obscurity that doesn't know their way around a recording studio. So I think it was valid for us to lend our name to it, to say, this is a credible platform. You know, and the artists as well that, you know, have, have jumped on board too, across the board with Jesse J, Will I Am, Tom Jones, have all lent their hand to it because we know that it is a platform that isn't going away. That, uh, that and it's uh, amazing for a new talent to get that opportunity, you know. But that's why we're on the panel, is to give them the opposite side, that reality is only for a short time. The real reality is when you get into the industry. But I'd prefer to have people who are in the industry coaching them rather than people who aren't coaching them about you know what they're going to be good evening my lad how you guys doing tonight good we are the script all the way from dublin ireland yeah 
Everybody see we cry. I was kind of into, you know, a lot of American style music, you know, growing up, Boys to Men, Stevie Wonder, Babyface, people like that. But then, of course, just as, as music takes hold, I just lost all genres and just started listening to great songs in every genre, you know. Something comes along that was emotional, I was, I was all over it, yeah, I loved it. Probably more, I suppose, rock, a lot of rock stuff, U2, Simple Minds, uh, Genesis. Um, I was definitely into more, I mean, even down to White Snake. Uh, who else can I think of? Um, Big Country is another band that I was into. I think we're all pretty much uh, versatile when it comes to music. We have we've all grown up on something different. Um, I think that's what gives the script its unique sort of sound. We're not, we're not like-minded at all when it comes to music in a way. So it's just when we when we come in to make music together, it's uh, I suppose what we pull from each genre um, is what creates our sonic thumbprint or our sound. You know. I think any advice we've been given has been hugely important to us. Um, Paul McCartney has, uh, I suppose, he gave us huge advice on being able to make sure that you're telling stories and that people know that you're pulling them into that. And you don't have to be, just because you're playing to 55,000 people, you don't have to be 55,000 people bigger than yourself, you know, things like that. Um, any advice that I'd personally give to young bands or any other bands that's coming up in it is, is to stop making yourself more unattractive to record labels and to other ways of putting music out. I guess a, another important reason why we do The Voice is because there's not a lot of shows that represents live music, live bands. It, it costs a lot of money to move a band around the world. We're, we, we sit here today with probably five trucks, three uh, three buses, a bunch of staff. There's so many people that come. It's, it's such that's a, just for me. That's just for Danny's wardrobe. Um, no, but it, uh, it's really important that we take a slice of a show like that and, and I suppose, highlight uh, live music. And I guess I, what I would say to more and more bands and the advice I would give them is not shy away from a, of some of the opportunities that right now they are shying away from just because they think it's cool. They're actually creating a bigger divide from them to the music industry and becoming successful, you know. Come on, take it away. Come on. When the heart breaks, no, don't break it.